This video lesson corresponds to sections 14.7 and 14.8 of your textbook on neutralization and normality. First, a little uh, quick review. Remember that the neutralization reaction is the combination of the H plus hydrogen ion from an acid and the OH minus hydroxide or hydroxyl ion from a base, which produces water. In a, a real neutralization, you would also produce a salt, the anion from a, uh, an acid and the cation from a base. We're going to ignore that because it stays in the aqueous phase and is much like a spectator ion. And we're primarily concerned with the neutralization reaction here. So if you know molarity and volume of one of the two reactants, you can do some solution stoichiometry to figure out uh, the other reactant. So here's a quick and easy example. What volume of 0.2 molar hydrochloric is needed to neutralize 100 mils of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide? So remember the uh, formula M times V, molarity times volume, is equal to number of moles. So we can figure that out for the hydroxide ion. We know molarity and we know volume. So, oops. Uh, so plug that into M times V. Molarity is 0.1 moles per liter. Volume is 100 mils or 0.1 liters. And we get 0.01 moles of hydroxide ion, OH minus, in solution. Now from the stoichiometry of a neutralization reaction, you know that the number of moles of hydrogen ion must equal the number of moles of hydroxyl ion to form water. So now we know if this neutralization is to occur, we know we need 0.01 moles of H+. So we can go to the second step, which is again M times V, but we don't know volume. That's the question. What volume of 0.2 molar, et cetera? So uh, we know molarity, which was given to you, 0.2 molar, and we know the number of moles of H plus needed to neutralize. We don't know volume. So substituting in and solve for V, I get an answer of uh, 50 mils, or 0.05 liters. Now the next question is a little bit harder. Same, uh, same procedure, though. What volume of 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.02 HCl is needed to neutralize 200 mils of 0.035 molar calcium hydroxide? This question is a little bit tricky uh, because calcium hydroxide, when one mole uh, dissolves, produces two moles of the reactive ion, OH minus. So the number of reactive ions in solution is twice the number of moles of calcium hydroxide that we originally dissolved. So your first step is to figure out, all right, what's the number of moles of calcium hydroxide we dissolved? That's M times V, shown here, molarity times volume. That's the number of moles of calcium hydroxide, but then we multiply that by 2, because for every 1 mole of calcium hydroxide, you produce 2 moles of OH minus. And uh, solving for that equation tells us we've got 0 0.014 moles of hydroxide ion in solution. Remember, in a neutralization, the number of hydroxide ions must equal the number of hydrogen ions. So now we know the number of hydrogen ions in solution. And thankfully, hydrochloric acid dissolves in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the number of moles of hydrogen ion is equal to the number of moles of HCl uh, uh, molecules in solution. So once again, we can use M times V. We know uh, the molarity of the hydrochloric acid from the problem statement shown up here. And we know the number of moles of uh, hydrogen ion that we need to neutralize this number of moles of OH minus. So substituting in, we need solve for volume, which is what we don't know. And we get 700 mils, or 0.7 liters. This leads us to a concept in chemistry called normality. And normality is simply the molarity of the H plus or OH minus ion in solution. Normality is a term specific to neutralization reactions, so we focus on the H plus or OH minus uh, ions. There are a couple other terms you need to know. Uh, first, the number of equivalents. Equivalent is uh, the same thing as moles, but again, a chemistry term specific to H plus or OH minus. So you can say how many equivalents of OH minus are in solution. It's the same as number of moles of OH minus. Uh, there is another concept called the equivalent weight. And the equivalent weight is the mass in grams of the acid or base compound that would produce one mole of the reactive ion in solution. This probably should say in solution over here. Uh, now, hearkening back to our uh, days of acid, knowing strong acids and strong bases, here are, the, here are the ones you need to know. A mole 
uh, per liter of hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric is monoprotic, one proton for every uh, molecule of HCl. So one mole per liter of hydrochloric is going to produce one mole per liter of hydrogen ion, or one normal, which is equivalents per liter, or moles per liter of uh, hydrogen ion. And same thing with nitric acid, your other strong acid that you know that's monoprotic. One mole per liter dissociates and forms one mole per liter, or one normal which means equivalence per liter of hydrogen ion in solution. It gets a little tricky when you start talking about the uh, diprotic or triprotic acid, sulfuric or phosphoric. Because in the case of sulfuric acid, a one mole per liter solution of sulfuric acid, if it were to completely dissociate in solution, would produce two moles per liter of hydrogen ion or a two normal solution. So you have a two to one ratio in phosphoric triprotic acid uh, would produce a three to one ratio, a three normal solution for every one mole per liter of phosphoric you put into solution. So in summary, for your monoprotic acids, one mole per liter will produce one normal hydrogen ions. So the equivalent weight would be the molar mass, for example, for hydrochloric would be the molar mass. 36.5 grams per mole of hydrochloric will produce one mole per liter of uh, H plus ions in solution. So that's the equivalent weight for HCl. Uh, but it's different, for example, uh, for sulfuric acid. For sulfuric acid, uh, the molar mass is 98 grams per mole, shown here. But remember, if you put that 98 grams in a liter of water, it's going to produce two moles of H plus if it fully dissociates. And so that's two equivalents of, uh, of hydrogen ion in solution. So one equivalent weight of H2SO4, the uh, mass of H2SO4 you'd need to produce one mole of H plus, is half a molar mass, or 49 grams, shown here. So uh, just be a little careful of your acids that are monoprotic or diprotic. Here's a quick chart from your, from your text, table 14.2. And here are the monoprotic acids. The molar mass is the same as the equivalent weight because it's monoprotic. For a diprotic acid, um, to produce one mole per liter of hydrogen ions, you would need half a molar mass. So here's the molar mass. Half of that is one equivalent weight. You can do the same thing for bases. These are the monohydroxylic bases. One molar mass is equal to one equivalent weight. But for something like calcium hydroxide, which is dihydroxylic, you would need half a molar mass. Here's the molar mass, 74.1. Half of that molar mass, or 37.1 grams, will produce one equivalent per liter, or a one mole per liter of OH minus solution. So uh, just a quick review, phosphoric acid, uh, the molar mass is 98 grams. Uh, the uh, the um, number of equivalents that that would produce, however, is three equivalents. So one molar mass yields three moles of H plus ion. Therefore, the equivalent weight is one-third of the molar mass. And one-third of 98 would be 32.7. That's a really lousy two, but just try to remember. And that's a lousy seven as well, 32.7 grams, or one-third of the molar mass. Now, um, just remember our, our calculation to figure out number of moles in solution is molarity times volume. Uh, so when we're talking about the OH minus or H plus ions, we're talking about equivalents instead of moles per liter, normality. So uh, N times V, normality times volume, equals the number of moles or equivalents of H plus in solution. And I think that's shown down here. Equivalents per liter times liter equals number of equivalents. Let's do a couple of quick examples then. What's the normality of 10 grams of sulfuric acid dissolved in 250 mils of water? Uh, well, remember that sulfuric acid is diprotic, so it will produce twice as many moles of H plus ion as sulfuric acid moles put into solution. So to uh, figure out the normality, first figure out the molarity of sulfuric acid, and then multiply by two. So here's uh, the molarity, 10 grams divided by 98 grams per mole for sulfuric. This tells me the number of moles of sulfuric acid. Divided by volume, moles per liter, will tell me the number of moles per liter of sulfuric acid in solution. And then, of course, multiply that by two. 
tell you the number of moles per liter of hydrogen ion, or, or the normality. So the normality is twice the molarity in the case of sulfuric acid. Here's another example, same exact procedure. Um, magnesium hydroxide, uh, what is the normality of a solution of 30 grams of magnesium hydroxide in 500 mils? Same exact procedure. First figure out the molarity, it's 30 grams divided by the molar mass, divided by the number of liters, so moles per liter is 1.03, but multiply that by 2 because the number of moles of hydroxide ion that are liberated is twice the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide put in. In other words, one mole per liter equals two normal. So the conversion factor shown here, 1.03 moles per liter times two normal for every one molar is 2.06 normal uh, magnesium hydroxide. So why do we use this idea of equivalence? Well, they are, again, specific to neutralization reactions. And remember, in any neutralization reaction, the number of equivalents of acid, or moles of H plus, must be the same as equivalents of base, or moles of OH minus. So uh, we can say, uh, much like M, N, M sub A times V sub A equals M sub B times V sub B, we can do that for normality as well. So we can do some stoichiometry with acids and bases. The concept of, uh, and the concept of normality makes these calculations a whole lot easier. If you know the normality of acids and bases, you can calculate the volume you would need for neutralization. So here's a quick and easy example. What volume of uh, half normal, 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide is needed to neutralize 125 mils of 0.5 normal sulfuric acid? Now, by inspection, we can already tell that both of these solutions are 0.5 normal, which means they have the same number of moles per liter uh, of OH minus or H plus in solution. And therefore, the, uh, the volumes needed to neutralize should be exactly the same because the normality or molarity of H plus or OH minus is the same. You need identical volumes. But just to show you the, the work involved, um, what, same question, we know normality and volume of the acid, we know normality of the base, but not volume of the base, and then using this expression, N sub A times V sub A equals N sub B equals V sub B, we can substitute in the things we don't know. You can see you divide both sides by 0 0.5 to isolate this variable, volume of the base, uh, so you get 0.125 liters, or 125 mils. Now, here's a little bit harder problem. Uh, the reason it's more difficult is because we're talking about calcium hydroxide in this expression, in this question. And calcium hydroxide has, uh, is dihydroxylic, releases two moles of hydro hydroxide ion for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. Uh, in addition, we're talking about different molarities here, 0.15 molar and 0.28 molar. So we have a little work to do. Uh, first thing we're going to do is calculate the molarity of calcium hydroxide, remembering that one mole per liter of calcium hydroxide would be too normal. So we were given the mor molarity of, of calcium hydroxide, just multiply it by two to get normality. And we also know the normality of, of nitric because nitric acid is monoprotic, so molarity is the same as normality or equivalence per liter of H+. So we can substitute the values, the things we know, into this expression. Uh, here's normality of the acid, 0.15 normal, is equal to V of the acid. What volume of acid do we need to neutralize? And uh, here's normality of the base. Here's volume of the base, and just substitute in and solve for V sub A, or volume of the acid. When you do that, you get 131 mils, or 0.131 liters. OK, that's uh, it for this lesson. Uh, you may proceed on to the homework and the reading from the text, sections 14.7 and 14.8. And otherwise, I will see you all on Tuesday. Stay safe, be warm, and go sledding. Bye-bye.